So in this Lightroom tutorial is a good one to learn color and simplicity of editing and how very small adjustments can actually play a very big role. Okay, so this video is sponsored by Motion VFX, where I get my plugins for Final Cut Pro. Okay, so I want to show you what I do with the documentary plugin. So here we have, for example, we get all these titles. Now, I find their titles way more cinematic than your regular titles. I like my videos to feel like movies now. So I wanted this text to slowly appear down the bottom. At the beginning of the video, I played these texts and then for example, this timeline here, I find it a really good plugin for storytelling because it's a documentary plugin. So that's why I use this plugin and then overlay backgrounds such as this film. You can drag and drop on top of your footage. So I regularly use this plugin. Yeah, if you guys want to check it out, there'll be links in the description for you. And yeah, I just want my videos to feel a bit more like movies. Okay, links down in the description for you to check out Motion VFX. This shot right here of hers. Now, there's not a lot going on in this image, but if you look at her other images, there's obviously a warm and blue split. Kind of brown, underexposed, glossy. This edited one over here doesn't look that different to our original in terms of contrast, color, gloss, but just we'll make a lot of adjustments here. But the final result is just a little bit of a change and just how big a difference that makes because someone did comment that keep it simple, not too many adjustments, but it's when you understand the tools really well and color really well, you can go pretty crazy in here and you get still get a natural, not over edited image. And that's how all the pros do it. Every single person in my guest editors, every single Lightroom tutorial I'm doing, I want to focus on the curves and complex edits in terms of how many adjustments you make. You make a lot of adjustments even if the final result is just a minimal edit. So it's very important to understand the tools. I think this is a good example of that. So what's super cool about this tutorial is this is Manuela, so we've done tutorials on her before. She is a student in my course and then she came in not understanding color theory, how she really wanted to learn how Lightroom operates scientifically and she had done other courses that they said just move this left and right, see what you like and she didn't like that about other courses so she enrolled and then she learned the reasons behind her adjustments so then she was able to get the style she wanted and then in other courses when it comes to curves people say curves are very powerful stay away from them and that's it but curves are the best tool there are by far most complicated but when you get a handle of them they are by far the best tool that you have to learn quite simply okay so we are recreating this one here let's get into it so uh, let's drop the white balance you can see we are majorly warm so let's drop it and we get pretty close to the tones but like if you want a consistent looking feed you want to get the smallest hue correct yeah let's get into it so let's just bump up some little bit of dehaze here this this is a complicated slider which kind of adds in contrast and drops the highlights that's how i'd explain it we'll contrast here uh let's go highlights this to the image vibrance And a bit of saturation so you can also you can see some of the hues aren't quite correct here so let's just real quickly try to do them um some people would think that's pretty similar but there's quite obviously like a shine to her image a gloss a contrast that is really appealing um so in this curve i'm gonna bring down the whites but as you can see our image gets too dark so let's bump it up now watch what happens when I drop this down we get this capping off to the highlights if you know what that means you are limiting the brightness of your whites so your whites want to be real bright when you drop this you are not letting anything get brighter than here so exposure can't go can't go past 
these curves here. So that adjustment is what creates the gloss to your image. Not necessarily a fade, they're a little bit different. Fades can be a bit extreme and wash out your image sometimes, but a gloss, I almost, I think almost always looks good. So just a bit of shadows to see more. Not so many blacks. A bit more vibrance maybe. Okay, so we should be able to almost finish it in HSL now. So you just gotta like look at skin tones, look at the greens, very subtle, but you know, this is important when you want to make your feed extremely cohesive. Skin tones around here. Too strong. A few more reads. Greens. Do we have blues? Not many blues. It looks a little dark, so it's just in here. with the luminance, the brightness of colors. So we look a little warm, like we want this different tone. We look red, reddish almost. Um, so we'll come in here and let's just bring in some yellows. Just a little bit and it kind of gives a green tone yellows pretty close to green um, I think that looks nice um, we're gonna do a minimal amount of sharpening so everyone likes to bring up sharpening but actually a very small amount of sharpening is what I prefer right so we'll just go like 20 or 24 um, and what we should have done at the beginning is actually do profile corrections before we started get rid of a bit of a net and yeah, I think we're about done. I think it sort of just comes down to playing with this to get the perfect brightness. So maybe this doesn't need to be so low, um, up a bit. Up a touch. And yeah, overall, I am happy with that. So if we go to reset, before we also cropped in a lot and placed her on the rule of thirds there so yeah that's kind of an interesting choice i would have thought i quite like the wide shot um let's go back yeah so here's uh before and after a game so you can see this gloss it's a little bit underexposed there's not a heavy amount of editing but the the editing is very intentional and very minimal as well which I think is extremely important to achieve the style you want I'll actually bring this down as well to deepen the skin tones there so as you can see there's a lot of adjustments here but the end result is quite minimal and like this minimal result is so important for like your style cohesive feed um, understanding everything so in the highlights I might just put the tiniest bit of blue Maybe doesn't need it. Cools it off a little bit up top. Um, it's maybe a bit too much. Yeah, maybe doesn't need it. So if you guys want to learn a lot more in depth into all these tools and adjustments and be able to recreate other people's style by looking at their style, know the reason behind your adjustments like in depth into color theory. I have a free training on color and curves. So once you watch those, you'll you'll learn two very important things. And then there's a few free trainings and stuff in my emails, free presets, free raw images. If you are on my email list and and then when you really want to go in depth join the course to go that next next level but yeah comment people you want to see on this channel and i'll reach out to them to try to um, recreate their edits 